Welcome to Teachers in the Dungeon. I'm Tom Gross with Dan Ream. Hello again, everybody. Good to be back. And we are back here on Teachers in the Dungeon. We're so thankful that you are joining us. If it's the first time being in the dungeon with us, welcome aboard. If you've been hanging out in the dungeon with us for quite some time, thank you so much for coming back and returning for some more Dungeons & Dragons talk. Yes. First time visitors to the dungeon are exempt from torture. That's right. After that, though, yeah, it gets rough. Yeah, no, uh, well, yes, indeed. <laughs> I was gonna say something, but I don't know what it was, so I'm just gonna move on. So, today we're gonna Not do a thought in his head, folks. We're gonna, we're going to, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been stolen by the mind flayer standing over there in the corner, <laughs> anyway. So, today we're gonna do a behind the screen session. Yes. Is that what we call it? Mm-hmm. Behind the screen session. And this topic was brought to us by Jason Mock. Yes. One of our yeah. listeners. So today our top... Well, I'm, Dan, I'm going to turn the topic over to you. All right. So yeah, this this really resonated with me right away. He Jason suggested that we talk about tips for DMing for, for I guess I could say youth, um, yeah. either teenagers or kids. But I, I figured we'd focus on like 12 and under. Yeah. DMing because we actually have a little bit of a, of um, experience with this. Right, you came up with the idea. It's been years ago now. Our kids yeah. are not twelve and under, the, um, <laughs> but uh, we got together and I DM'd for you and your kids yep. and our friend Corey Club mm-hmm. and his son. And then I asked my son to sit in. That did not go well, and my daughter. <laughs> Stepped in and took his place. It must not have gone well somewhere in the other parts of the game because yep. he was fine. He he was fine. He played along. He he did. He 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 knows his manners, but he did not want to continue. And I didn't. It's no reason to force somebody to. Right, and I mean that might be one of the first items of like DMing for kids if they decide that that's just not for them. Yeah, don't force it. Set them free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we so I DM'd, and obviously you and I both DM for high school students, so right. I think we've got a lot of the same things going on here. So I, I put together a list, you did too. Both have lists. I think we talked just briefly, we didn't tell each other, this would be surprised, both of us, but you did tell me, I think you have one more thing than I do, so right. maybe, do you want to go first? I will, okay. sure. Um, so one thing that, and this is, this is not maybe not a, a completely original idea on my side, But it's something that I certainly would know of being a teacher, and that is when we're introducing or playing with kids, especially, as you mentioned, the 12 and under, is to the the keep it simple. Right. Don't get too complex. If they want to do something and you want to add a roll to it, just put a DC, let them roll, see if they beat it, rather than getting into the minutia of, well, let's check a skill check, and what bonuses do you have, and... This circumstance, and you get disadvantage because, you know... This isn't insight. This is perception. Right, right yeah. exactly. It, you know, it, D&D can get very layered that way. Yes. And I think when you're introducing it to or playing with young students, uh, the, the more simple it is, probably the better to yeah. keep them engaged and not so frustrated on the rules and, and focused more on the story. I just I came up with a bonus one. Oh. That I will say at the end, you just triggered another idea. But I rolled a twenty. That, a twenty that, inspiration. Uh, well, well, <laughs> inspired me. I don't know of in the bigger sense, but sure. So right. that would that's my first one. Okay, I started very big picture and got specific. Okay, or foundational and built from there. So my first one, I'm gonna have a hard time kind of squishing this into a single sentence, but. It's about the, the the overall goal of the adventure, mm. how what you should do with that. And in my mind, the adventure goal should be a little lighter, 
or if or it should be just straight up truly heroic. You got to save the day. Ooh, I like that. Um, or make it a, the goal a task rather than a fight. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you have to close a portal, blow up a bridge, get medicine to someone who's sick. Mm-hmm. I kept it simple for the kids. They just had to go investigate an abandoned mine right. and get treasure. Mm-hmm. Tried to keep it as simple as I could with that. So I feel like that that ties in with what you were saying is you don't want a bunch of layers of double crosses and, and mysteries and clues they have to put together. And if you do that, obviously keep that simple. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're DMing for your own kids, you might know best what they like and that right. could work out fine. But I think particularly when I was DMing for your kids and Corey's kid son, I wanted to keep it basic. Yes. And I think even taking that a step further is, especially with younger kids, you know, if you're introducing Dungeons and Dragons to, you know, six, seven, eight year olds, maybe find something that the that the kids like or enjoy or would be something super age appropriate. Like I was just thinking when you were talking about that, you know, you could you could have a game or a storyline, and I might have read this someplace. So again, don't hold me to it if if you've seen this someplace too. But you could give them a task, as you mentioned, the task, and making it age appropriate for them is maybe in their village, someone's dog has gone missing, right. and it's their job to find where the dog is gone, and maybe the the party of the party of kids goes to finds tracks that lead to a cave and maybe inside that cave they come across a monster but it's not an adult monster maybe it's their age monster who has stolen a dog because they've always wanted a right. dog okay. and so kind of give that like ethical moral dilemma but at their level of like oh i've always wanted a pet and yeah. so what will the players do with something like that that'd be yeah. kind of cool that would yeah what's next for you Next for me is saying yes as much as possible. Not yeah. denying, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if they if they are just being creative and having fun, and they say that they now you wouldn't want to say it on some ridiculous, but I don't know what's ridiculous, but you know, so if they say, well, I'd really like to do this or that, being able to say absolutely. How do you want to do that? You know, get them mm-hmm. to describe, get them, and so rather than putting up roadblocks for them saying yes as much as possible so that they can they can really stretch their creative thinking um, and being open to the adventure rather than trying to close it and maybe make it not something that they were, you know, wanting. So, yeah, pretty simple one. Say yes, yes. as much as possible. I think that's true for adults, too. Yeah, I think, absolutely. I think it's much better to do that than to just say no. Nope. I think on the adult side, what we what we get is the you can try, right, <laughs> <laughs> right, or you know, tell me how you're going to do it. And, yeah. Right. Exactly. yeah, exactly. All right, uh, for me, I, I think your idea with the missing dog is is very creative. I think that would be awesome. For me, I'm kind of old school. You can't have D and D without combat. Sure. So, but obviously, when you're dealing with with kids got to take some things into consideration so my second tip would be make sure the enemies are obvious monsters you know giant Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. giant scary animals monstrosities for the the group that i ran for you and your children it was orcs giant spiders spider creatures and giant rats yeah where there's not it's it's there's a clear delineation that these creatures are going to try to get you, so you just got to get them first. Right. And I like that. So that it it does kind of go back to the keeping it simple. I think. Mm-hmm. You know, it reminds me of is you know back in the day when when we would have been starting to play, and it was the first edition, second edition. Um, Dungeons and Dragons was very much like that. Yeah. There were bad guys and there were good guys. And your goal was to eliminate the bad guys and get their treasure and get out. So certainly, you know, and I think that's that's where your I, I like that because that's where, you know, yours is kind of coming off of that sort of feel. Mm-hmm. And the, the dog one it, adventure is kind of goes off of like modern 
Dungeons and Dragons, right. where it's it's more storytelling. Mm-hmm. Although you can have storytelling in both, and yes. you can have combat in both. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could take mine a step further and say, you know, the goblins' parents show up. <laughs> yeah, and they're not happy with you, and you better do something. But anyway, um, yeah, I like that because c- combat is what is I think is the expectation at some point of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, and I don't know. I might. This wasn't one of mine, and you might have something along this. But again, if you're if you're working with children who are really young, or you don't really, I don't know, you want to take things too far with kids rather than killing monsters or killing beings you could just get to while you defeat them yeah does that get to one of yours Mm -hmm. i don't know do you want me to do another one sure was that what was that yours off of that one no that wasn't mine but um but i so we'll stand by folks we'll come back to that (laughs) one in just a moment because my next one is i think and i do this in our with our teenage group um when they're freshmen coming in or they're just brand new starting Dungeons and Dragons in the game club. Now some of it is because there's so many kids in game club that I don't have time to do this this process I'm going to talk about, but giving them pre-made characters. Right. I think getting what I learn, what I've learned in playing Dungeons and Dragons with clubs and with with groups of kids is the the quicker you get to play, yeah, the better. Yes. Sitting down and figuring out hit points and hit die and, and abilities and skills and all of those things. Even if you're keeping it simple and like whitewashing the character sheet down to, you know, hit points, a name, a race, a class, a weapon, and that's it. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I still think about- I, I still think having having all of that done up front so that you can sit down at the table and say, all right, here's where you are. Yeah. And just get going from square mm-hmm. one. And a lot, you know, it's funny, a lot of the kids at the beginning of the school year, when when I tell them that that's how we're going to get started, a lot of them get a little pushback. Well, I have a character. Ah. I'm like, let's just use the ones that we've got. I By the second, by October, November, nobody's complaining about their pre-made character. Yeah, because they can start modifying it. And they can start adding char- character to it, and and finding a different weapon someplace or what whatever. It's only an issue when I say, and this is to high school kids. I don't think junior high or earlier, younger, will ever push back on. Well, here I've got a character for you, or here here's five characters. Choose one of them. Yeah, I I don't think you'll ever get a pushback from middle school and younger on that, but it gets you to the gameplay a lot faster. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. So my my next one is actually fairly tied in. I would say another thing for younger kids, particularly soft pedal the horror, but emphasize the non-human, non-lovable aspects of enemies. Sure. If there's an enemy, as I said, make it as as <laughs> irredeemable as possible. But then, you know, soft pedal the horror of it too. Don't don't make it too right. scary. Mm-hmm. And, and again, that's pretty obvious. I know everybody knows that, but I I feel like I was careful with your kids, particularly. You had uh, your daughter was, your younger daughter was six, six maybe? or seven. Yeah. So I made sure, I mean, I wanted their interest. I wanted to paint a good picture, mm-hmm. but I tried to think in terms of a Disney villain rather than. Oh, yeah, that's a good, know. oh, I like that, that thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're used to seeing Ursula or. I, now I'm drawing a blank. The you know the witch with the apple is that just her name? The witch. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. So putting that into the game, I like that. So I did that with the later on, right at the very when we, right at the very end of our series of sessions, we your girls had to go rescue a child yeah. from a hag, and I thought you know the hag, kind of stereotypical storybook. You know, yep. evil witch, but you know, a green hag. You can you can reason, mm-hmm. to, and and make deals and find ways to trick and all of that. And I thought that would be a little more approachable for for your girls than just right. oh, I don't know, a a, a drow or a dragoloth sure. or <laughs> right. something, something that, truly horrific. Right, they can't wrap their brains around. Yeah, cool. I like that one. My next one is something that you did 
that I when I asked my girls today before we recorded, I said, I said think back to when we played D&D at Mr. Mr. Reem's house. I said, what were the things that really stand out to you in your minds now, many oh. years later? Hmm. And so Kaylee mentioned the story, which is something you've been talking about, you know, the, 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 the Disney-like villains. And she said, she said that story really stands out to her. And I'd, hmm. even, I'd even forgotten, kind of, myself, of, like, what we had done. Mm-hmm. But she, she remembered most of it. And so she was the older of my girls when we played. But then Kelsey, my youngest, she said my next one. And that is things. Things. Because you had the little sparkles that were the gems. Oh, right. Yeah. No, they were little gems. They were Mm -hmm. the the plastic, like, stick-on gems. Mm -hmm. And you had the gems that, and I don't remember exactly how you used them, but she collected them. Like, you would give them to her. That made a huge impression on her. She's like, oh, the things that I got... Were the, were the best, the you know those gems and and she said that she really remembered. Uh, we, you had a map for them that you had made and kind of burned the edges of. I'm pretty sure that was that. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so like I let, uh, so she said the things. I guess I would say or we would say as adults the artifacts that you brought to the game and you okay. let us use. And and it really made sense to me because she is a very visual person. And those types of things are really important to her. Okay. And and she is a collector of just kind of thing stuff. <laughs> and so I was like, of course that would make sense that that is what would be important to her in the game. And so I think anytime when playing with kids, you can have pictures or like we said, artifacts. Um, even and Kaylee said, oh yeah, Kaylee was like, I remember the map and the minis, mm-hmm. maps and min- anything that can put something uh, concrete. Yes. To a kid's mind to help them to help them develop that picture. Right. I think would be re- is really important. Oh, that's cool to hear. Yeah. I tell you the truth, I had forgotten those things myself. <laughs> she still has right. those. I she went downstairs <laughs> and found the binder with her Everly uh, with her character and in that pocket folder, those gems are still in there. <laughs> well good, good. Then they serve their purpose. Yeah. Because yes, you were investing in a gem mine, so it made sense yeah. that you'd have gems to find. So my next one, actually, I, I realize I should have kind of condensed these, but I, I, my next one is what you've already said, that it's also important, I think, particularly with younger kids, to soft pedal the violence. Yes, it's about combat. Yes, it's about competition. Mm-hmm. So I had almost the same thing that you wrote down, that instead of, you know, you cut their arm off, it's, it's oh, you got him. Yeah. Or, or okay, you, you, you got some damage on him. And... But they're still they're still going to try to get you, so you got to be ready to yeah. to defend, and just put it in those terms. So it's it's exciting, and it's it's it is a little bit of edge of your seat, but not. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just obvious. We don't take kids to see aliens in right. a theater, you know. So <laughs> don't describe, you know, Something blood awful. acid mm-hmm. eating the face off of somebody. It's just yeah. not not cool. That ki- that hit me um, when I was teaching the girls how to play Pokemon. And I just, you know, I slipped when I said, oh, you killed my monster. And one of them, I don't remember which one, looked at me and said, I killed it? And I looked at it. <laughs> my, my eyes went back and forth between the two of them, and they were just looking at me. <laughs> and I said, actually, you didn't kill it. I said, you just defeated it. And, I, and so ever since then, I've been super careful about, <laughs> the lang- you know, the language that you use with little kids. Right really makes a lasting impression or you know i'm so i'm glad she said something about it because i probably would have just unconsciously continued to say oh you killed my monster or something like that but defeated it's the same idea without the yeah the finality yeah the well it, it turns around to i mean as parents and as teachers i think we are you know have been trained by our children by our students that you you have to match their tone in stuff like this. Right. And so you you start soft, and if they can handle and want a little more, then you can dial up the mm-hmm. excitement. It's like it's like roughhousing or anything else. Yeah. You know, treat them very, very carefully, and if they're socking you, then you can, you know, go a little rougher with them, and tr- you you figure out where they're where they're at the peak level of fun. Right. And try to hang out there. 
I think I mentioned on one of my Scarlet Citadel episodes that these high school boys that I'm playing with, they're freshmen, and the Scarlet Citadel is basically, a, it, it is a horror, very horror-like setting and, okay. and uh, uh, kind of play. And when I read it, preparing for for the game, you know, the, playing the game, I'm, it didn't even cross my mind. That that this horror scene, you know, there's there's a part in there where you know, things are hanging on chains and you know, oh. creatures and people and stuff like are hanging on chains, and so I don't know. It was the I took a cue from one of the boys, and I looked and I looked across the table and I looked at the one right in front of me, and I said, "Okay, hang out, guys, time out," and I did the the X card right. with them. I got it just off the side. I had no card sitting there. I put a red X on it. I put it on the table. And I said, let's talk about this X real quick. I said, because this is a, a horror dungeon. So I said, if something, a description, whatever, gets too much for you, I said, just flip it over and we will, we will retell that part of the story. And I said, we are all part of this community. So there is no judgment if you flip it. There's no question. I, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, come on. You know, right. I said, we, I will retell the story and we will change things if that's how. And the, and the boy that I took the cue from, he looked around and he goes, I think I'll be okay. Okay. I said, well, it's there if not. And Good. no one's ever flipped it. Um, but they, I will tell you, they, they feel being brand new players, they are feeling the fear of being in there. That's cool. And and I put it out there and at the beginning of each session I say here's the X card just please use it, you know, don't don't let something bother you and they're like, "Oh no, we're good. We're good." I said, "Okay, cool. So let's move on." But anyway, I think that's, you know, that's important and even with adults. You know, you never know what might trigger somebody mm -hmm. to to feel awful, you know, either emotionally or scare somebody. You know, we all come from different places. We're all safety zone middle-aged dads here yeah. in the Midwest. So, <laughs> yes. but I, I know I've seen multiple accounts of DMs who really do take things too far with mm. just things of a sexual nature or violent or sexual violence right. that, that just, that, that really do harm the people that are playing. They right. don't want to, they don't, that they don't want to play that. Right. And I would probably be part of that. I don't think I would, be comfortable mm -hmm. in that kind of a, a gameplay. So, right. yeah, it is something you have to watch as a DM. So, and, and you know where I learned that was at GaryCon last year when we oh, sat yeah. down for Adventures League. I think that's, that's right. the, I think I'd heard about the X, playing the X card and things like that, but that was the first time where I'd ever been at a table where someone introduced it. And I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It's very, you know, uh, it, it was very easy conversation for that dm to have with it and we were all strangers mm -hmm. you know we didn't know anybody i mean besides you and me i didn't know anybody else at the table so it made a lot of sense i was like okay that's a good way to present it yeah and on we went yeah all right was that your last one no i've got one more yeah Do one more have? okay i have one more so i'll uh i'll give my last one i'm curious okay. if it's if it's yours okay um because it's the it's the item that i thought kelsey was going to tell me and that is i feel like even though i don't do it in game club I feel like when you play with kids, you got to have breaks and you got to have food and snacks. I thought <laughs> right. sure oh, yeah, Kelsey yeah. was going to say, the snacks were my favorite part. Because, man, she participated in eating and snacking the entire time. <laughs> and the M&M jar and the chips and everything else. But And so I was super impressed when she didn't say snacks and she said something in the game. But I, I feel like that's just that's just a must. It's it, part of the, it's part of the you got to raise the kids to the culture. It introduces part of the, culture. the culture absolutely, yes. and that's I, I said that at the, at, when I was talking to them. I said I said oh Kelsey, I thought you were going to say the food, and Kaylee goes, why would that be part of Dungeons and Dragons? I said, dude, did we ever play without food there? And she goes, well, no. I said, have you watched us, the adults, play when we're at our house? Is there food there? A frozen pizza? And she's like, well, I guess not. Or I guess there is. And I said, it's part of the culture of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever sat down, other than our game club, I don't think I've ever sat down to play Dungeons and Dragons without That's probably the snack. single biggest drawback to playing online. 
Yeah. Because you can't do that. Yes. It's not the same to just hear somebody chewing into their microphone as it is to... Right. <laughs> to, to actually be around the, the table serving <laughs> I, food. So. I forgot about that <laughs> aspect. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it also, it also highlights the people in the group who are awful cooks and not creative with their snacks. I'm raising my hand for those of <laughs> you that don't have the video version. Oh, wait, nobody does. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am so awful with snacks. I am very predictable. It's going to be chips or Chips Ahoy cookies, Oreos, or something store-bought. So I'm thankful for people like you oh. <laughs> and Chris Metz. Oh, Chris and, is the master, uh, yeah. And Marcus, who brought homemade ice cream no, one time. Didn't. I mean, the, some of the food that we've had at our at our table. You missed it. He brought cookies from Breakers last night. They were, they looked like they had been soaked in butter. That's how good they were. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I missed the game session. That's painful. Yes. That is painful, especially when you give me that news. <laughs> All right, what's your last one, Dan? My last one is... This is this is probably more self-serving than anything because I wondered if you I didn't know you were going to ask your kids what they remembered, but I guess I was kind of hoping they remembered this. But I would say take some time to build out NPCs that are lighthearted, funny, quirky, oh. memorable in some way. Yeah, and I I did it sort of seat of my pants because we got going and you went into a shop. And I was mm-hmm. trying to keep it interesting and had to come up with something, some, something memorable about the shopkeeper. And the only thing I could come up with is she just did a nervous laugh at the end of every sentence. <laughs> so, so where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did feel like your girls liked it because they did kind of yeah. pay attention and giggle at it. But that mm-hmm. was that was something I think is it goes along with just making it memorable for them and fun. Too. Yeah. We'll have to ask Corey, but I I remember looking at his son so many times thinking, he is so into this story. He I, I would say he probably dove right into the story and yes. had like appreciation of, of all of those aspects. And has since become a DM. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We we did that. One out of three <laughs> of the kids. <laughs> well, well I guess one out of four, but hey, yeah. a quarter. Yeah. Of course. And I'm not writing off that one of my kids won't get back into Dungeons and Dragons yes. at some point. I, I, I see I see one of them eyeballing the books when I'm when I'm prepping and things like that. So I'm not gonna say which one in case I'm wrong. And, <laughs> but it'll be it'll probably be a couple of years down the road. But you know, I think when you play with kids, it you don't know what the lasting impact will be. You know, I, I probably could attribute Dungeons and Dragons to being what I do today as a librarian, game club, you know, trying to reach kids that don't have other events at the school that they can participate in or that, you know, right. they, they have a hard time relating with the other kids, but game club does that for them. Yeah. I don't know that I would I would have had that thought or idea or direction if I hadn't played myself as a child. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, I, I have to say it got me into reading. I don't know that I would have ever been a, as much of a reader as I am now had my neighbor that introduced me to Dungeons and Dragons said, read this book, and he stuck The Hobbit in my hand. Yeah. And just my my mind went crazy. Like, yeah. how did I not know this existed before now? Yeah. So you never know. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Jason, thank you so much for uh, sending that topic to us for a behind-the-screen session. I would like to know from Jason or from any of our other listeners looking at you, Rum Weather, how you run sessions for your family because I know there are people out there. You and I have not been persistent enough to pull the moms into game sessions, Mm. but some of you out there have. Yes. Or dads. Right, right, right. Whichever, you know. But so if you've got some good tips on mm-hmm. or just just interesting stories about what it's like to run a, a game for your family, like your entire family. Right. Let us know. I'd be curious to hear about that. I would, too. I would, too. I think I think that's something I could do if I could get my wife over the hurdle. Yeah. She wants nothing to do with it. And I'm like, but I think actually I will say this. She was really interested that Kelsey was interested and I thought maybe that would bring her over to be able to play with the girls and this type of a thing. But it, I, I think I dropped the ball on that one. 
Uh, anyway, but yeah, I would love to hear that how how anyone who's done that successfully yeah. from the reluctant child to the reluctant spouse. Yeah. What does yes. that look like and how much fun is it? Nice. I'm sure it's a blast. So, all right. Well, I think that wraps up the behind the screen episode of Teachers in the Dungeon. Yes. Yeah. Good discussion. All right. Well, if you have not done so already, reach out to us on social media or, or follow us, like us, love us. I don't know what, pay, what, pay what attention it is. to us. <laughs> <laughs> we are on Twitter at Dungeon Teachers, Facebook and Instagram, Teachers in the Dungeon. You can send us an email, Teachers in the Dungeon at gmail.com. So, with all that said, so long, everybody, and keep rolling those 20s. We'll talk to you next week. That wraps up today's session, so thank you for listening to Teachers in the Dungeon. We appreciate you and your feedback. Until the next time we see you in the dungeon, we hope you roll high on those saving throws. If you enjoyed the show and want to hear what happens in the adventure, subscribe to the podcast. Have questions, thoughts, or ideas? Check the show notes for our website and our contact information. This podcast is not affiliated or endorsed by Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, or any other third-party Dungeons & Dragons entity. Teachers in the Dungeon is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. All names and sounds and any other related items are properties of their respective trademarks and or copyright holders in the U.S. or abroad. The official Dungeons & Dragons website can be found at www.dnd.wizards.com.